This is cycle two, week 13 science. This is experiment 161 in Van Cleve's book, um, The Spoon Bell. Before we jump right into the experiment, I, I want to make just a couple of sort of housekeeping uh, comments. Uh, first, welcome back to the new semester. Uh, here, here we go. Um, I, I am excited uh, about the upcoming semester and uh, I hope that you are uh, as well. Um, uh, a couple of other things. Some of you last semester commented that uh, I was barefoot in some of our videos, and that is true. We are often without shoes uh, in our home, but we always care what you, the CC community, uh, thinks and says about our videos, and we listen. Uh, and then secondly, uh, another comment we had was a lot of people have said, we want to see your lovely assistant. I totally support both, uh, both ideas. And so this morning, with one stone, two birds. Allow me to show you this. That's right. I am wearing socks, <laughs> and on this particular pair of socks is my lovely assistant's face. <laughs> A little early Valentine's present was waiting under the Christmas tree uh, for me. I casually mentioned that I would like some fun socks to wear to work, and uh, I received uh, one pair of socks with uh, every member of my family's face uh, on them. And so I wanted to show those to you uh, this morning. Okay, so experiment 161, spoon bell. In fact, before I even jump all the way into this experiment, let me remind you, since we're starting a new semester, uh, of what we're doing here. Um, these are, this is uh, the science portion uh, of the CC curriculum. Uh, our, our goal is to, to know God and to make him known. Uh, our, our goal is to create fun, safe places for the students to explore science principles. Not every demonstration, not every experiment is going to work. It doesn't always work when I do them. It, it may not work for you. It especially uh, is challenging sometimes uh, with a live audience or, or with students who are participating or people who are participating. That's just part of it. And in fact, that's one of the best parts of doing science because science is not about it always working. Science is about asking questions that we can then test and then conducting those tests to find answers. And so sometimes when you're doing an experiment, you have to revise the experiment. Sometimes you have to control an, an extra variable that you weren't even thinking about yet in, in order to get clean results. And that's why real scientists spend years in training and spend a lot of time perfecting their, their craft. So just remember, if the experiment or the demonstration doesn't go exactly the way you want, that's okay. Ask questions like, why? maybe suggest to the students a possible um, extra variable that's causing a, a, an issue. Uh, and I'll always try to highlight for you potential things uh, for you to bring under control to help make your experiments a success. But, but again, n Nobel Prizes are, are almost never won by scientists who look at data and just say, that's exactly what I thought. It's always by, by scientists who look at data and say, huh, that's odd. And that opens up a whole new line of inquiry and a whole new line of research. Okay, now Van Cleve's experiment, 161, spoon bell. This is a, a really good experiment. This is easy, uh, good demonstration. The students can all participate uh, in doing this, and I think the students will all like it. This is a practical demonstration about uh, sound waves and how sound waves are generated and how sound waves uh, move. So there's some good vocabulary, good grammar, that we uh, can introduce to our students. So what I've, I've drawn here on this piece of paper are just two different waves. Uh, to, to, and um, something that you can very easily um, illustrate. The, the pieces of the wave that, that you want uh, to highlight to your students uh, is, is that waves have both a peak and a trough, that waves start at a zero point, the, the peak uh, is the highest point from that zero point, this is known as the amplitude of the wave. The amplitude of the, of the wave, uh, if, if my drawing was perfect, if it was a perfect wave, the amplitude of the trough and the peak would be the same because the, way, the amplitude of a wave is a, is a property uh, of the given wave. Uh, and so uh, that's some good grammar. Uh, the, other, the other thing is um, the frequency uh, of the, the wave. Uh, the, the frequency is, is this time period. Is, is this, the frequency is how many complete cycles uh, of the wave in a given time period happen. Uh, and so a complete cycle of a wave then is a peak uh, and, and a trough. And so if we look then, if we illustrate, to illustrate my point here, the frequency of this wave is approximately double the frequency of this wave because I have one peak and one trough. I have two peaks and two troughs in approximately 
uh, the same time period or the same space uh, on the paper. So it's a visual illustration uh, of the frequency difference uh, of the two waves. And, we're, and we'll talk about that uh, in just a minute. And then uh, again, this amplitude is this distance here. And that's also an important point that we're going to illustrate uh, today. The relative amplitude of waves corresponds in our ears to the, to the loudness uh, of the sound. Low amplitude waves are very soft. High amplitude waves are very loud. Uh, and then uh, high frequency waves have a much higher pitch in our ears. Low frequency waves have, have a much lower sound. We're going to illustrate um, both of those things um, today. This is a really cool experiment, 161 in Van Cleve's book. Uh, in, in fact, it's, it's one of um, our two-year-old's uh, favorite experiments. And she highlighted it for me uh, to be sure that I remembered uh, to do it, which I always appreciate the help. Okay. So then, how to actually do this demonstration. You need a spoon. Uh, I think a metal spoon is definitely what you want. Uh, a wooden spoon would probably work, but, but it will be a little bit harder for the kids to hear the difference um, in, in the pitch, uh, in the frequency of what we're going to do. So then, I, to set this up, I, I cut a, a piece of string that's about 30 inches long. Then I tied my spoon in the middle. And then I added some tape to, to make it uh, to make it stick. Don't worry too much about about the length of the, of the string. I would Van Cleve's book suggests the 30 inches. I think the most important thing is that it's an even number, so that uh, it's easy to put the, the spoon in the middle. That's the the most important thing is that you want each side to be about um, the same length. Uh, but again, if they're a little bit off, that will work. In fact, uh, mine are just a little bit off. They're probably a half inch off uh, after I was done. But that that's okay. Um, so if 40 inches works better for you, I think that will work. The other, the other part of this experiment is letting the, the spoon hang from the students. They're going to they're gonna hold the spoon in a certain way, the strings in a certain way, right? And the, the spoon will, will hang free. So you, you don't want it too short. I wouldn't suggest 10 or 12 inches. I would do maybe 30 as the minimum, but I think you could go up from there, especially if you got um, some older kids maybe <laughs> and they're tall. Um, okay, so then what do we do to actually do this experiment? You take one side of the string, and I'm going to wrap and around my finger, like that. I wrap here, again. Okay, and now I'm gonna suspend it like this. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put my fingers in my ear, and then I'm going to gently uh, tap the spoon against this chair or any other um, standing object. And I want to hear the, the difference. So we're gonna tap very softly first, and then much louder. the difference uh, in, in the two. Uh, I was doing this, letting my five-year-old practice this, and she said, it's like a church bell, which I thought was perfect, a good description. If you have students who are a little skeptical, or to illustrate the point, the, the one point, then what you should also do then is have your students do leave it just like this, but now use their pinky fingers and put their pinkies in their ear, like this. students will find when they do that is that they hear the sound much better when the ends of the string, my index fingers, are the, are the fingers that are in their ears. They'll still be able to hear it when they're using their pinky fingers, but, but not to the same extent. And that's an, a, good, a good point that we want to illustrate about waves. So what's going on here? The loud sound, when we bang the spoon hard, again, has a much higher amplitude on the wave than, than the quieter sound. Um, the frequency, the pitch of the sound, there may be a little bit of difference and, and very finely tuned, you know, kids with finely tuned ears may be able to hear a higher pitch the higher you um, you, you strike it um, because the, the sound is being made by the impact of the spoon and the chair. And so the, the molecules that are in the spoon then are vibrating. As we impact them against the chair, they're vibrating. And that vibration is, is producing the waves that ultimately we hear as the sound. But, but those waves are propagating, that is, they're moving. They move through the air, you know, in all dimensions around, and that's why my lovely assistant sitting there can hear the sound as well. They're also moving up the body of the spoon, and in fact, they're traveling down these strings. And that's why I, I hear, and your students will hear the sound better when they put them in their ears, the fingers that are attached to the strings, in their ears, as opposed to when they're just blocking their ears with their pinkies. 
because they're not completely occluding their ears, they can still hear the sound, but it, they'll notice uh, the difference. And it's, I think it's a good, uh, a neat addition um, uh, to this experiment. And so it gives you again, an opportunity to talk about how waves uh, and their properties and, and things that move them. One of the important properties about waves is that they're able to travel through different media. The air being one example, the spoon, and ultimately the string as, as another. Um, you could ask, you know, you could start by talking about uh, waves in general. You talk about students who've been, maybe been to a, to the ocean and, and seen ocean waves. Everyone has a general sense, though, of what, what waves are. You can talk about that vocabulary. Um, you could highlight, especially for your more advanced students, that this is, is, is why doctors and nurses and other healthcare professionals use stethoscopes. Now, now, a lot of things are going on there to magnify the sound, but after that magnification, amplification of the sound, those, wet, those sound waves are simply traveling up into their ears. And that's, that's what they're able to do, and that's why uh, they're able to do it. So it's a very practical um, illustration of the same kinds of principles that sound waves are, are made um, by, by object, in this case, by the spoon striking the, the, the chair, and so then it vibrates, and that's what's producing the sound. And then those waves are being propagated through the air to the people who are around you, up the spoon, up the string, and ultimately into your ears. And then finally, um, for especially for again for the advanced students, that's how our eardrums work. Our eardrums are very, very, very fine, paper thin, um, intricately, delicately made uh, instruments by God, right? And they're sitting in here, and so as those sound waves are coming either through the media of the ear or through the media of the spoon, string, fingers, into that canal where then the, that membrane vibrates, and that's how we hear sound. And then our brain interprets that sound. Um, in, in different ways. And so um, there's a lot going on. This is a great experiment. It's a very easy demonstration. It's easy to set up uh, and it's easy for all of the students to do. Um, I know that they'll like it. This is Cycle 2, Week 13 Science, Experiment 161, Spoon Bell.